back with you. Got a dynamics problem today. I'm teaching dynamics this semester, and this is the kind of problems we're doing at this point in my class. So I thought this would make a good video. Got a ramp here, and uh, they've got two blocks uh, connected by a rope over a pulley. So the second block is hanging under the force of gravity, and the first block is on the ramp, so it wants to slide down the ramp, but there's a uh, rope pulling it potentially up the ramp. Now, what's actually going to happen here depends on a few things. It's going to depend on the relative masses of the two blocks and the angle of the ramp and the coefficient of friction. So let's make some of those numbers here, and then we'll uh, go from there. So uh, the mass of the first block is 10 kilograms, and to keep things simple, let's make the second mass also 10 kilograms. The coefficient of friction is 1 over 5, and that's 0 0.20. And finally, we're going to need an angle for the ramp. Let's have theta be 30 degrees. All right. So the way I'm going to proceed here is I'm going to write an equation of motion for block 1 and an equation of motion for block 2. Both of them are going to have tension in them. The tension of the rope is acting on both blocks. And we know that the tension in the rope is the same everywhere. So I'm going to be able to, to manipulate those two equations and get tension equals something for this one and tension equals something for that one. Well, if that something is equal to tension for both of them, those two somethings are equal to each other. So that's the way we're going to proceed here. Let's do mass one first, okay? And let's look, look at this here. Okay, I've got a tension going up, and I've got a friction force going down the ramp. The only other force at play here is the weight of the block. Well, I'm going to divide that up into components that suit the coordinate system I'm going to use here. Now, I'm going to use two coordinate systems, one for each block. They're going to be different. That's okay. As long as the equations of motion are consistent within that coordinate system, it's not going to be a problem. So, this is going to be Wx, and that's going to, I'm sorry, Wy, and that's going to be Wx, where Wx is going to be W sine theta, and Wy is going to be W cosine theta. Now just as a simple check, what if theta were almost zero? That component would have, wx would be almost zero and w would y be almost w. Well, if sine theta, if theta is almost zero, that is almost zero, so that almost goes to zero. If sine if theta is close to zero, cosine theta is almost one, and w almost equals wy. So this is a kind of a, an intuitive check to make sure we've got that right. Of course, you can work this out using basic trigonometry, too. Okay, so let's write out the equations of motion, the equation of motion in the x direction. So I can sum the forces in the x direction, and that's going to equal m1a1. All right, now we've got two accelerations because we've got two different masses. So I'm going to have an a1 and an a2 here. We'll get rid of those here in a little bit or, or uh, deal with those. So the forces in the x direction, let's see, t is positive minus wx minus the friction force, and that's going to equal m1a1. All right, let's see if I can keep this in frame here. Probably better stop there. Let's go back up here now. The friction force is going to equal mu times the normal force. Well, that's just going to be w sub y. w sub y, so that's going to be mu w cosine theta. All right. So let's plug that in here, and I'm going to get T minus W, this is Wx, so I'm going to put W sine theta there, okay, minus mu W cosine theta, and that has to equal M1A1. So I've got that the equation of motion written out. Now it would be nice if I had T equals something, like I said, so let's rearrange that. Okay, so that's M1A1 plus W sine theta plus mu W cosine theta. Okay, there's my first equation. This is one, this is a keeper right here. Okay, I'm going to need that. So there's, there's the equation of motion for block one. In fact, let's write that up here. M1A1 plus W sine theta. Okay, so we got that for safekeeping up there. Now, let's write the equation of motion for the second block. All right, get rid of all this stuff, and don't need that anymore. Okay, for the second block, this is a little simpler because it's just hanging in space. So for block number two, okay, 
if tension goes up like that, weight goes down like that, and well, that's just equal to M1G. That's it. There's nothing more to it than that. And uh, now, what about the acceleration? In the first one, I assumed that x positive was that way. Well, if this block is going up that way, and that's positive motion, then positive motion this way, I'm going to assume is, is uh, down. So let's just call that x positive like that. Right? So if that's positive, then I'm going to get minus t plus m1g, and that's going to equal m1, or I'm sorry, m2, a2. Right? That's my second equation of motion. And again, I want tension on one side of the equal sign and whatever else on the other side. So let's call this, let's rearrange this. And I'm going to have m1g minus m2a2. I'm sorry, that's m2g, not 1. I should know better. There you go. Now I got it. And let's fix that here too. There we go. Now I've got it right. So that's equation number two. T equals m2g minus m2a2. So I've got two equations. What don't I know here? Well, I don't know t, but I don't care what t is. It's going to go away here in a second. a1 and a2. Hmm, I've got too many unknowns for the number of equations I've got. How am I going to deal with this? Well, there's one other equation I'm going to get here. Since there's, a, there's only one pulley here, there's no mechanical advantage, at least over the pulley, I know that a1 equals a2, and they're both positive because of the way I define the coordinate system. So now I've got one thing I don't know, two things, three things I don't know, and I've got three equations, so I'm in business. So the first thing I'm going to do is write out these two expressions, and since they're both equal to t, they both both equal to each other. So m1 a1 plus w sine, that's w1, but I can do better than that, come on, m1 a1 plus, I'm going to call this m1g, because that's w, w1 I should say, um, sine theta plus mu m1g cosine theta, okay, so there's the first expression, now let's plug this one in down here, m2g plus m2a2. All right, so far so good. Now, I know the two accelerations are equal to one another, so I can just go through and erase the subscripts. There. I know those are equal to each other. And since I also know m1 and m2 are equal to each other, I can just erase the subscripts there, too. So earlier when I missed the subscript, it turns out it probably didn't matter. Now in general you can't get away with that, but here you can. Let's move that over a little bit. So let's, let's go through here. I've got one equation. How many unknowns do I have? I know that. I don't know that. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, the only thing in that expression I don't know is A. And so I've got one equation and one unknown. Now to save time here, I'm not going to work all the algebra out. But if you work it out, you get... 1.603 meters per second squared. Okay. Now, positive or negative? It says that says positive. And since I assumed a1 and a2 were the same, they're both moving in the positive direction. So it's going to, m1 is going to move that way at 1.603 meters per second squared, and m2 is going to move down at 1.603 meters per second squared. So there you are, nice, nice uh, tidy textbook problem. I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.